Hello and welcome to Motomouth. I'm Osha K. Levy, and it's time for another road trip. I was recently invited to the U.S. launch of BMW's new Scrambler model. Now, BMW Scramblers traced their lineage all the way back to the R68 model the company displayed at the 1951 International Bicycle and Motorcycle Fair in Frankfurt, Germany. That classic's high-mounted 2 into one exhaust was a factory option, which mimicked the lines of racer George Meyer's machine. By contrast, the new Scrambler is based on the existing R9T production model, but with several notable changes which differentiate it from its more expensive sibling. The party starts tonight in Hamburg, New Jersey, at the Posh Grand Cascades Resort. Let's go up there and see what's going on. The Grand Cascades this time of year is normally exploding with fall foliage, but we're having a late summer, so right now it's exploding with moto journalists and BMWs. I arrived in time to get situated into my luxurious suite, and then headed down to dinner, where I met my fellow journalists. We feasted as the sun set over the hills of western New Jersey, and then went right into the product briefing. In a nutshell, BMW is aiming to leverage the R9T's configurable architecture in an all-out assault to target every conceivable niche in the sport, especially those that appeal to younger, less affluent buyers. The company's betting on its data, which shows that almost 10% of R9T sales have been to first-time motorcycle buyers, who earn $150,000 to $175,000 per year, the second highest household income of any BMW model except for the K1600 GTL. It's a segment ripe for the picking, and the Scrambler is just the first of supposedly 10 variations coming down the line. In fact, while we were all covering the Scrambler in New Jersey, BMW announced two more variations at the Intermot show in Germany, the stripped-down R9T Pure and the cafe-inspired R9T Racer. The Scrambler has some notable differences from the R9T on which it's based. The modified bridge-type tubular steel mainframe features a separate rear subframe, which can be quickly detached via eight screws for a chopped minimalist solo seat look. The wiring harness is divided between vehicle functions and engine functions, to further streamline modifications. Significantly, the Scrambler's wheelbase has been lengthened to 60.1 inches from the R9T's 58.2 inches. Rake has been bumped 3 degrees to 28.5 degrees, and trail has been extended by almost half an inch to 4.4 inches total. Overall weight has been shaved by 4.5 pounds versus the R9T, and the ergonomics of the Scrambler are also more upright and keeping with its mission. It's got higher handlebars and a shorter reach forward, enduro-style footrests, and an elevated seat height of 32.3 inches versus 30.9 inches for the R9T. In the more obvious nods to cost-cutting, the Scrambler swaps the R9T's upside-down 46mm telescoping front suspension with standard 43mm telescoping forks, replete with gaiters, for that period-correct look. It also makes do with non-radially mounted brakes, the R9T's cross-spoke wheels are supplanted with black cast aluminum hoops, and the front wheel size expands from the R9T's 17 inches to 19 inches for the Scrambler. The R9T's comprehensive multifunction display is replaced with a single speedometer, and the Scrambler's 4.5-gallon gas tank is made of steel instead of the R9T's aluminum. These changes result in an MSRP of $13,000 for the Scrambler versus $15,095 for the R9T. The bike's aesthetics are certainly a home run, staying true to the scrambler roots of yore with a perfect balance of modern minimalism and retro nostalgia. The upswept, bronze-colored Acropovic high pipes running along the scrambler's left side are easily the most dramatic styling element of the package, with striking faux super trap ribs near the outlets. Better still, they sound as glorious as they look, emitting a deep, bass-rich grunt right off idle and continuing the concert until redline. The contrast of the quilt-stitched tan saddle against the matte sheet metal was also very alluring, as was the uncluttered styling of the unadorned headlight shell and speedo cluster. Our test fleet was a mix of scramblers, some equipped with the cast wheels and some with the optional cross-spoked wheels. Obviously, the cross-spoke wheels are the more attractive of the two, but all the test bikes wore the optional Metzler Carew 3 tires, which have a mildly aggressive off-road pattern that tilts the scrambler's bias to light gravel trail duty at the expense of on-road grip. The routing BMW laid out over our three days together was nothing short of spectacular. We left the resort and threw some serpentine twisties and light off-roading 
en route to Buttermilk Falls, where Jason Paul Michaels, the technical editor of Iron and Air magazine, got a little too much air, as you can see here. Kevin Wing was there to capture the action. Jason was okay, but his scrambler didn't fare nearly as well. BMW supplied another one, and we continued on, heading over Dingman's Ferry Bridge and towards the Hawk's Nest, which is easily the most scenic road in the area, albeit a very short one. But this was all about pictures and media, so it was a no-brainer to hit that spot. Lunch was at the Cedar Lakes Lodge and was unbelievable. With our bellies full, we made our way back to the lodge for the end of day one. Despite being from here and in the rather tired habit of trashing the state at every opportunity, I must say I never knew some of these roads existed. Outside of California, they're as good as anything I've ever seen for motorcycling. If nothing else, BMW succeeded in making me hate New Jersey a little less at least until the next property tax bill comes in. My bill would more than buy a new BMW RT every single year. Day two had us bravely heading through Fog Soup in the AM and on to Bear Mountain, my favorite local place to ride. We stopped at the top of Perkins Memorial Drive, where you can see New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania, all from one high vantage point. From there, it was a rapid change from rural to urban as we battled our way through New York City traffic and route to Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh, oh, check it out. In the place with style and grace Allow me to lace these lyrical dishes In your bushes uh, Who rock grooves and make moves with all the mommies The, the back, back of the, the club. club Sipping my wet is where you find me what? The back of the club Macking yeah. holes, my crew's behind me uh, Mad question asking, blunt passing Music blasting But I just can't yeah. quit Because one of these honeys Biggie got to creep That's with right. Sleep with, keep the epa secret Why not? Uh, Why blow up my spot? Cause we both got hot Now check it I got more Mac than Craig and in the bed. Uh, Believe me, sweetie, I, I got, got enough to feed the needy. Uh, no need to be greedy. I got mad friends with Benzes. See notes by the layers. True fucking players. Uh, jump in the Rover and come over. Tell your friends jump in the GF3. I, I got the, the chronic by the trees. Uh, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Throw your hands in the air if you's a true player. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Till the honeys getting money. Please, uh. I love it when you call me Big Papa. You got a gun up in your waist, please don't shoot up the place. Wow. Cause I see some ladies tonight that should be having my baby. Uh, baby. We hit Jane Motorcycles and then went on to Works Engineering before stopping for the day at the William Vale Hotel. We finished off the riding Wednesday night with a scenic dinner cruise around Manhattan and were able to get up close and personal with the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island as well as just gaze at the most famous skyline in the world. There really is nothing like New York City, and I think the Scrambler will find its niche, at least in part, as a versatile urban warfare machine for the city commuters and the hipsters, people searching for that retro vibe without all the retro repairs and maintenance that go with owning an old bike. Though not a true off-road machine like the GS, the Scrambler itself is quite versatile and was equally adept on the shallow gravel trails we traversed as it was dodging potholes in Gotham City. But the Carews howl relentlessly on the tarmac starting at about 40 miles an hour, so if you're going to spend your time on the street, keep the standard street tires. My main complaint about the bike was its front suspension, which was rather harsh over surface imperfections, much more so than I remember the R9T being, even though total front suspension travel is up 0.2 inches to 4.9 inches total on the Scrambler. I'd like to try a scrambler with the standard street tires to see if they can help alleviate this characteristic, but the changes to the wheelbase, the rake, and the trail inevitably result in a heavier steering field than the more neutral R9Ts. 
Otherwise, the Scrambler is a fine overall performer in the BMW R Series tradition. The ergonomics are all day comfortable, and the switch gear and the rider interface are all logically laid out as expected. These were just my first impressions. Soon the press will dive deeper into this model with more comprehensive testing and the inevitable head to head comparisons against the other European scramblers from Moto Guzzi, Triumph, and Ducati. At this stage, it looks like if they can sort out the front suspension, BMW's hit the mark. But equally as important to the bike and the ride, it was also really an awesome experience to finally meet many of the journalists I admire and have been reading and watching for so many years, like Mike Seat, Zach Kortz from Motorcyclist, and Jenny Smith from Rider, Brian Rathjen from Backroads, and Sean Thomas. I even had the pleasure of meeting Jeff Buchanan, a colleague of mine at Motorcycle Consumer News who I'd never met before. Great to finally put faces with the names. And of course, I got to hang out a little bit with BMW's brass, like Thomas Plusinski, the department head of BMW's product and technology communications, and Roy Ollimuller, BMW's motorcycle, motorsports, and heritage communications manager. I must say it was fun to be wined and dined by BMW. And to them and all my fellow journalists and all the staff that made it happen, thank you for an exciting few days of riding an adventure. I'll see you all again soon. Until next time, keep the shiny side up, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more of your favorite Moto Gear reviews.